We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. It is starting to get a little chilly out there, so we should be thinking about how we're going to keep our engine ready to start when it gets really cold. So in this tip, we're just going to look at a couple of strategies or methods that builders use to keep their flying aircraft warm, keep the engine warm anyway, so that it will start up as soon as they want to go flying, even if it's 10 below outside. Well, that's pretty cold. But we know it's a lot of fun to fly in the dense, cold air. So let's prepare our aircraft engines so that they will be warm when we're ready to go and start them. Also keep in mind that very cold engine starts are probably not good for the internals of the engine, mostly because the oil is a little bit thicker and won't flow as well. So when I'm talking about keeping the engine warm, it means keeping the cylinders, the block, and, and the oil sump, the oil, warm also. And at the same time, we don't want to have to heat the hanger if we can even do that in the first place. We just want to keep the engine warm and save a bunch of energy. Let's take a look at a couple of possibilities. One strategy that we see used every once in a while is the old space heater under the cowl setup. Now if we notice here we have a couple of electric space heaters and they are positioned right at an exit actually of the cowl. So the idea is that the heat will be forced into the bottom of the cowl and then eventually it will heat the engine and that air will then exit out the other openings of the cowl. Like for example we have one here and we also have one at the front of the engine also. And every cowl is a little bit different. But now, of course, there are some problems with this setup. It's rather inefficient to heat air and then try and get that hot air to actually heat the engine. And then a lot of it kind of escapes. Uh, we could certainly build some baffles around the heater down there to force all of the air into the bottom. And of course, if we used two heaters like this, that would be quite a bit of uh, power and we want to make sure we don't overload our circuits. But certainly this is better than nothing though I would wager a guess it takes an awful lot of heat to bring our engines up to uh, a useful temperature and a lot of electricity. Now let's go consider another option. So let's talk about the type of preheating system where we have elements that attach directly to your engine block. Here is an example of one of those. This is by Reef Preheat and it consists of a cable. We're going to plug this in and heat resistant cabling and then everything plugs right in, very modular. The basic heating consists of, now this band will wrap around your cylinder jug and it's adjustable of course and then you will plug it in. And in this example we have a, a preheat system for a four cylinder engine so each of the four cylinder jugs gets wrapped around with one of these and plugged in. And then we have one or optionally two strips that would attach to your oil sump. 
Now for the Rotax 912, instead of a strip, we have yet another very large band that goes around the oil tank on the 912. But the idea is, is we're going to distribute our heat to heat our oil so that it is warm, and then each of the cylinders. And I believe these are 50 watts a piece, so we're looking at 250 watts for the system. And this will raise the temperature of the engine, and this is something you can experiment with and see how long it takes to raise how many degrees on your engine, and that way you'll know how soon to turn it on ahead of when you want to go flying. And then, of course, this is going to get plugged in with an extension into a wall socket, but what's nice about going electric like this is we can set a timer, a programmable timer, maybe one that has a different schedule for each day of the week so that you can have your engine warmed up hours or even a week before you show up. So let's say every weekend you want it on, you would program your timer to turn it on during the weekends and turn it off or maybe once a day at a certain time so you don't have to leave this on all of the time. But this was very nice of Reef Preheat Systems to send us one of these so that we could take a look at it. And now let's talk with an actual customer that is using this system and see what he has to say. Clint, take it away. So this is my uh, Continental O200 uh, engine installation. And I've uh, chosen to install a uh, Reef engine preheater. And I've chosen the, the lower of the, the models available, which only puts 50 watts per cylinder on. And uh, you can see that the, the uh, heater consists of uh, essentially some fancy hose clamps with uh, some sort of heating pad material um, wired up to a central wiring harness for you to plug it into the wall. Um, so I essentially have 50 watts on each cylinder and there's also a pad, a 50 watt pad down on the oil sump too so I can preheat my oil. And when you get the get the cowl on and a nice blanket over it in the winter time I get about a 50 to 60 degree um, increase in temperature on the cylinders and uh, they're nice and warm for engine start in the winter. And so this is where you provide your power and of course controlling that power on or off is up to whatever discretion you want to temperature wise or remotely with Correct. that. Yep, I've heard of uh, plugs that can turn it on automatically when the temperature reaches a, a certain set point. Um, I've chosen to, uh, to turn it on remotely. I have a Wi-Fi hotspot that I leave on down at the airport and also a um, uh, one of those small home automation outlets that allow you to uh, to control the outlet via an, an Android app or an iPad app. It's very convenient. I can sit at home and drink coffee and preheat my aircraft engine without driving across town to turn it on. Would you say about how long does it take to get that type of temperature differential? Are we talking an hour, three hours? Uh, with this with this particular model of uh, of heater, um, I leave it on overnight to achieve that. Um, but something like six or six hours or so is is enough to get it to, to a point where the engine is, is startable. Uh, I, the the hanger is heated and I keep keep the cowl under a blanket, so I get pretty good pretty good thermal performance out of it. If you were uh, uh, in North Dakota, northern Minnesota, and your plane was out on a uh, outside, not in a hangar, um, you might want to get the bigger system or maybe look for a different solution. But this one's served me pretty well so far. And of course, turning on the preheater from home completely remotely is another possibility. Of course, that requires some internet or a cellular hotspot because there are apps and there are electronic switches that can be remotely turned on and off over the internet, over the cellular airwaves. And some people home brew them themselves people who know all about this electronics stuff and there's also some 
commercial implementations of that available also. If you have additional ideas on how to effectively preheat an engine, feel free to share it in the comments below so that we can all take a look. And there you have it. Now we know a couple of ways we can preheat our engines and we should start thinking about it now before the real cold weather comes. And a good time to be thinking about that is while we're, that's right, back to building.